Films in Focus with David Sterrett is underwritten by The Movie House, your destination for first-run Hollywood and independent movies, and a digital portal to the Met Opera, National Theater Live, and special events worldwide in Millerton, New York, and on the web, themoviehouse.net. David Sterrett is the editor-in-chief of the Quarterly Review of Film and Video, contributing writer at Cineast, film professor at the Maryland Institute College of Art, Robin Hood Radio's very own critic, who joins us weekly, the films Three Identical Strangers, Memoir of War, and Puzzle. That's a challenge. Hi, David. How are you? That's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. Yes, it's a puzzle. Well, I hope to dispel any puzzling elements here about these three films over the next little bit of time. Uh, we have three, three uh, films which are really uh, quite different from each other, although there's a certain similarity between uh, the, the second couple, Memoir of War and Puzzle. But let's begin with Three Identical Strangers. This is a documentary, and it is just uh, far and away the most fascinating, at least theatrical documentary that I've, I've seen this year. Not nearly enough documentaries get into movie theaters, although, of course, they are ubiquitous on television, but um, and you know cable and all that. But uh, this one is uh, playing in, in movie theaters. Theaters, and it's, it's really quite a remarkable film. So Three Identical Strangers uh, centers on three uh, men uh, whose names are Eddie Galland, David Kelman, and Robert Shaffron, and they are triplets. They are identical triplets, and uh, they all have different last names because they were all raised in different households. Each one of them was adopted. And uh, the movie starts off with something which is, uh, it, it's an amu amusing little incident. Uh, they were, they, way back uh, in 1980, uh, one of them went off to, uh, to start college at a community college. And um, he, people kept coming up to him saying, hey, how you doing, man? Great to see you again. Uh, and they, they weren't just saying hello, like, uh, oh, you know, we're both new here, or you're new here, and I've been here for the last couple of years. They weren't saying hello like that, like, welcome, it's nice to see somebody. Uh, they were like hugging him and stuff, and he had no idea what was going on because he had never been there before. And it turned out that there was another fellow who looked exactly like him, but who had a different name, uh, who had gone to the college previously. So um, it turns out that he, he then discovers that, yes, he has a twin. And then a little bit farther on in the movie, it turns out that the, these these two discover that there is a third, that there is a that they are were in fact triplets who are separated shortly after birth uh, and all ad ad adopted into different households. So this is just the starting point of the movie, and really, I'm not going to say too much about what develops in the film because it has so many to use the cliche, twists and turns. You can never tell what's coming le le next. And it's all real. It all actually happened. Uh, but it turns out that uh, the adoption agency through which these three babies were adopted uh, way back a long time ago uh, was also was, was engaged in some practices which, which, which were being kept, uh, which were a very closely held secret and which they really did not want revealed. And then it turns out that also involved in all of this was a psychological experiment, uh, an experiment that was going on to attempt to probe that age-old question which is still being explored of course very much today, nature versus nurture, which is the most important in how we turn out to be in our lives. Is it nature, which is to say our genes, the things that are inborn in us and just sort of manifest themselves as we grow older, or is it nurture, is it the way in which we were brought up? And it turns out that there was an experiment that was being done to study this and the separation of these three babies was all a part of this, and a whole lot of other stuff emerges uh, as the movie goes along. It's absolutely remarkable, and again, it's all real, which makes it even more remarkable. Some of this stuff would be hard enough to uh, to believe if uh, <laughs> if it were in a fiction movie, uh, and it isn't. And we also, of course, since these uh, this was a very long time ago, they they first met each other around. <laughs> Uh, so by now, uh, a whole lot of stuff has taken place, which I certainly won't reveal, uh, but we definitely discover things that transpired as they grow older. For a while, they were really, really close. They started a restaurant together in New York called Triplets. Uh, they were very close, but then tension started to develop among the three of them. Anyway, a whole lot of stuff happens. It is just as interesting and entertaining as any fiction film I've seen in quite a long while, and I always want to encourage people to see documentaries 
movies because they tend not to get seen uh, so much, and this one is absolutely riveting. And uh, take my word for it, everybody out there in films in focus land, uh, you'll have a wonderful time if you go to see this movie, Three Identical Strangers. It's just an amazing story, and also in some ways quite a chilling one, uh, and is very, very worth having a look at. So, again, our next two films are very different from each other, although they have a certain similarity, memoir of war and puzzle. Uh, among other things, they are both about very much about, about women and about what it means to be married and about what it means to have your own life. But memoir of war is like... Three Identical Strangers is based on fact, even though it's a fiction film, it's based very closely on fact. Puzzle is a purely fiction film, but they both have interesting things to say about what it means to be a woman with a husband who is, for the moment at least, um, causing some, some, some difficulties in the woman's sort of sense of identity. So Memoir of War, uh, this is based on a, uh, a, a, a memoir. Uh, kind of an autobiographical uh, tale, which was uh, written back in 1944 during World War II, although it wasn't published until about 40 years later, by Marguerite Duras. Uh, the very, very great French uh, French uh, novelist and writer generally. I interviewed her many, many years ago. I found her to be a fascinating woman. She also made a lot of movies, very unconventional experimental films. Uh, so uh, re really uh, quite an amazing person, although she died a number of years ago. And again, she wrote back in 1944 uh, this book, which has been published in English as The War, A Memoir. Uh, and uh, it's about experiences that she underwent during the war. World War II years. Now, the book is very unconventional. I've read the book. Uh, it's a fascinating book. Uh, it actually consists of a number of short pieces, some of which are directly autobiographical, some of which are kind of turned over into the fictional direction of things, but deal with very similar themes uh, and, and, and events. So it's an unconventional book, again, with a series of sort of shorter pieces in it. Uh, this has been adapted uh, by the filmmaker Emmanuel Finkiel, who's a French filmmaker, uh, been adapted into a, you know, a linear narrative film. Uh, which is really quite fascinating. So the main character is named Marguerite, and she is she is Marguerite de Ross herself. Again, all of this is based very much on fact. And what happened during uh, the World War II years is that she was working for the Vichy government, but she was also a member of the French resistance, fighting Nazi rule, uh, fighting the Nazi occupation. She was a member of a of a, of a of what we might now call a cell, uh, which was involved in very much opposing the Nazis on a secret basis. Well, her husband. Husband uh, named Robert Antelm was uh, was arrested and sent off to a concentration camp, and that is very much what the film deals with. It deals with the Marguerite Duras, um, her married name Marguerite Antelm. Uh, uh, pining, longing, working as much as she can for the return of her husband from the concentration camp, always wondering, is he even alive? If he is alive, uh, is he in, you know, has he been tortured? Is he in some sort of horrible condition and so forth? So uh, the movie deals with the latter period of this as France is waiting for its liberation and then experiencing its liberation. And this is the most, this is, this is really the, the focus of the whole thing. Uh, now that France is being liberated from the Nazis, uh, will she be able to find Robert, her husband? Uh, will she be able to, to determine even if he is alive what is going to happen? And that is the suspense of the film, that is the suspense of the story, and eventually it is resolved. So that is what this is about. It's very much about the character of Marie, Marguerite Duras uh, uh, living very much her own life, and a courageous life too. Uh, being involved in the uh, in the resistance against the Nazis, um, and but 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 consumed with thoughts of her husband and worries for him, and the suspense of whether he is alive and whether she'll she'll, she'll ever ever be able to get him back again. So that's very much what it's about. The thing that is most striking about the film, to my opinion, is how quiet it is, how thoughtful it is, how introspective it is. Very much dealing with the inner life of this main character, the Marguerite character. Um, there's a lot of voice over in the film where we hear her thoughts, uh, her wonderments, her, her, her perplexities. Um, and all of this is expressed again in this very understated, muted way. It's just a fascinating movie that casts, for me at least, almost a mesmeric kind of a spell. Uh, it's really a quite, quite a lovely, lovely film in that respect, even though it's about a lot of dark things that happen. Uh, the, 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 the book 
uh, uh, the, the War, a memoir, contains some stuff which is much more, mm, you can almost say, sensational or sensationalistic uh, than anything in the film. There's, for example, a whole long sequence where a, 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 a member of, of, of the collaboration with the Nazis is being basically tortured, and the main character, the Marguerite character, is very much involved in this. None of this is in the film. Again, the film is very introspective, very quiet, uh, very evocative. Uh, I found it absolutely riveting to watch, and I really, really recommend it very, very highly. Uh, it's, uh, again, all too few um, <laughs> foreign language movies reach American movie screens, and this one is there, and I, I could not recommend it more highly. I think it's one of the best movies so far this year. So now turning to our third movie, Puzzle, which is a good old-fashioned American uh, uh, fiction movie uh, with a very nice story and a very wonderful cast. Uh, Puzzle is about puzzles, among other things. And again, it's very much about what it means to be married and uh, about the meaning of a marriage, although in very different terms from the way that Memoir of War explores that subject. Uh, we have here the story of a young woman, played, by the way, by the wonderful Kelly MacDonald, whose name is Agnes. And she is married to a guy named Louis, and uh, they appear to have quite a nice little marriage going. You know, they have a fur family, I should say. You know, they've got a couple of kids. Uh, Louis has his own uh, uh, um, auto service, his own garage, uh, where he works on cars. That's the family business. And one of their sons works with him there. The other son is getting ready to go off to college. At least they're hoping he'll go off to college very soon, and he'll be the first one in the family to go to college. And uh, so, you know, again, it's a nice little household. Also, they're very religious religious, which is an interesting uh, aspect of this movie. The movie is in no way about religion, but, you know, there's all this talk about Hollywood liberals and godless Hollywood and how all those people in Hollywood don't care about religion. Here is a movie in which religion plays an important part. Again, the movie is not about that, uh, but we see the family at church. We see the family saying grace before meals. We know that Agnes, whose very name has a kind of a religious connotation, uh, we know that she cares very much about religion. She's involved with activities with her local church. And it's just an interesting little sort of a, of, of a sub-element within this movie that is not all that common in Hollywood movies, but that I found very refreshing uh, to see there. In any case, uh, Agnes, among other things, is a little bit bored with her life. And one day when she has nothing else to do, uh, and she really is, is just sort of, oh, you know, how am I going to get through the rest of this day? There's nothing happening. Uh, she takes down a birthday present that she received recently, which is a jigsaw puzzle. And she spreads it out on the, page, on the table, and she does the puzzle, and she discovers she's really good at it. She puts the puzzle together in no time. Sort of the opposite of me, by the way. So uh, there she is. She discovers she has this interest in puzzles. And she decides to make a rare trip into New York City. They live in the suburbs upstate. Uh, she makes her a rare trip into the city to see if she can get some more puzzles. And she goes to a puzzle shop, which has been recommended to her. And she sees a, a little flyer there, like you know, one of those th things people post on bulletin boards, of someone who is looking for a puzzle partner to enter a competition. And she gets in touch with the guy. This turns out uh, to be uh, a man, an Indian American man, played by the wonderful Irfan Khan, uh, who people have seen in Life of Pi and lots of other movies. He's a very, very wonderful actor, and his name is Robert. He's recently divorced, and he is a puzzle champion, and he wants to enter this competition, and he needs a partner. And the two of them end up forming a partnership. The thing is that all of this is so unconventional for Agnes and her quiet little family life that she is reluctant to tell her husband, Louis, that she is doing this. So she's basically sneaking off to New York uh, you know, once or twice a week, a couple of times a week, actually, uh, to meet with Robert and they practice their puzzling but we wonder what's going to happen when it gets closer to the competition. Is she eventually going to tell her husband? Is her husband going to find out about this? It's all very innocent but it looks sort of suspicious like she's having an affair. And I will reveal that eventually in the story, the relationship between Agnes and Robert does fall over into an affair about which the religious and very conventional middle-class Agnes feels extremely guilty. And we wonder what the consequences of this are going to be when and if her husband does eventually find out about everything that's been going on. Puzzle is a quiet movie. Again, it's a movie about family life. Uh, I didn't find all of it plausible. The ending of it I found especially implausible. I thought the ending was very weak. But I'm talking about the last couple of minutes of a movie which by and large is very, very nicely done. Uh, it's not 
not a movie that pushes anything in your face. It unfolds very quietly and allows us to uh, just sort of discover the characters' personalities and psychologies uh, and inner thoughts as the thing unfolds. Above all, it is beautifully acted. I always enjoy Kelly McDonald. She is first rate in this movie. Irfan Khan is as good as ever. David Denman, who I know mainly from a sort of a secondary role uh, in the wonderful uh, TV series The Office, uh, is very, very good uh, as, as Louis. And it's just a movie which I enjoyed very much watching. And it's very much a movie about a woman and about married life and the complexities and the puzzles of married life. And these are subjects which are not explored, I think, often enough in movies that manage to be both serious and very entertaining at the same time. So three movies which I recommend this week, Jill. That is my upbeat story of the moment. Thank you very much, David Sterrett. Films in Focus. The films Three Identical Strangers, Memoir of War, and Puzzle. <laughs>